Dr. Michio Kaku, a physicist and a futurist. I use science to predict the future. In fact, in medicine, entertainment, and our way of life, everything is going to change explosively in the next 30 years. The future will be an exciting, fascinating new world, completely different from what it is now. Is a computer chip designed to emulate how the human brain thinks, which IBM successfully developed and revealed to the world. In the future, wearing a similar device, you might be able to access the unlimited knowledge of the internet directly into your brain. In the future, with a combination of robotic enhancements and genetic engineering, you might have a perfect body. There's room to debate precisely when this will happen, but such a world is coming. No longer a type of science fiction or futurist's dream. Biotechnology or the industry of transhumanism is now being advertised to the public. The great rolling out has begun and so soon, so abruptly it seems. Not as if the public is not ready for it. I mean, they have primed our minds and imaginations with images of this type of technology since the 50s. One could consider science fiction as the forerunner of modern transhumanism, as a fantasy concept for the real world ambitions of futurists like H.G. Wells, Isaac Asimov, and Arthur C. Clarke. Science fiction has been more than fun and imaginative storytelling. It has been an open book resource for the blueprint of the technological future of humanity. In other words, science fiction through mass media has, for nearly 70 consecutive years, supplied us with the predictive programming of our future. Exaggerated at times and understated at times, of course, the foundational motives always seem to remain. We see these remaining motives in the merging of man and machine, or singularity, the rise of autonomous self-aware technology, and the fruition of a global network community and world state under the control of a pluralist and multipolar oligarch. We have been force-fed these concepts as ideas of fiction for decades, mentally priming us to accept these concepts as common, and now are being introduced to them as adjuncts or appendixes to our new and evolving modern lives. The monostate cybertech culture is around the bend, and it is now that they are revealing this reality to the public. If science fiction and fantasy media production has primed the population mentally for singularity and transhumanism, how have we been primed physically? This brings us to the conditioning methods of futurist technology used to persuade a group to acquiescence and dependence. This conditioning is achieved through the culture of convenience. With technology as the mechanism that produces convenience, we can observe this in smart technology, which can clearly be perceived as the earliest version of merging technology and humankind. Cell phones, for instance, have produced a common practice of civilians keeping a technological device on their persons at all times, even next to them when they sleep. It is only a matter of time until that technology finds its way inside the body instead of resting directly outside of it. Martech, addictive slot machine social media, GPS tracking technology, the internet, and of course, video games. These things have not only become mandatory, but they have been priming society physically to interact with technology as a dependent and driving force in our everyday lives. Now that we are so accustomed to these tools and gadgets, even addicted and dependent on them for survival in the modern world, it would not be very hard to introduce much more advanced and even risky types of technology to us. Especially if these new forms of tech claim to offer even more convenience, more security, and more reliable service than the ones we already have. Some might call this the foot in the door technique, 
or systematic exposure at incremental levels so change occurs slowly and is nearly undetected until the public can hardly recognize the world around them. Yes, they tell us that this technology is the natural evolution of humankind that will make life on planet Earth a breeze, efficient, and sustainable. It will save you hours of time you might have lost in the 20th century. Organize your life in a unit the size of a jelly bean with jazzy mass organization digital life systems or smart technology. Give yourself a second brain or an extension of your intelligence with human enhancement technology, healthcare and medical industry advancements that will help you live longer or run faster, luxury products and distracting entertainment programming, touch screens and scanning systems at every corner, cameras and recording devices at every turn, 24-7 advertisement constructing a false sense of reality and quality of life, while marketing the mass is a cartoonish standard of living the angst of needful things, until we eventually pursue things more than people, choose feelings and stimuli over truth, meaning, and substance, until we become more and more like the robotic machines we aim to replace tasks of everyday life with, hollow-hearted. But all this sounds great overall, right? We are finally reaching that Jetsons level of futurism like the television always said we would. So what are our interests as common folk in this new biotech futurist fantasy society? Well, it's moreover innocent, actually. This all makes us feel progressive, like we are contributing to the betterment of society and the planet Earth. It also makes life better or easier for us all on an individual level. Plus, globally, it seems like we are making nature safer and more efficient, right? We are mainly interested in the general idea of making our experience here better, while attempting to maintain a stable environment to house and nurture our species. Nothing spectacular or grandiose. I'd say as a population, we are more pragmatic when it comes to tech. Plus, we have been conditioned to believe all change is good change. And not only is change being made, but we are part of it. We play an intrinsic role. Or do we? And what role do we, as average citizens, the laity, really play in this quagmire? This brings us to their interests in all of this, and namely Elon Musk, who seems to be, and oddly, the lone warrior that is spearheading all of this technological advancement with little to no restraint or recourse. So if Musk will single-handedly bring these advancements to our living rooms and dinner tables, do his interests match ours? According to Musk, his main objectives fall in five areas. First is sustainability and the management of the environment. Second is space exploration, not just finding life on other planets, but inhabiting other planets permanently. Third is the internet and global communication and information networks. And next is, of course, artificial intelligence. And lastly, rewriting the human genome. Now, does any of this sound like a practical and logical approach to human advancement? Does it at all match up with the needs and interests of the average citizen today? What about the third world citizen today? Does this speak to their experience at all? I would say an emphatic no. And why do they aim to accomplish these things? For discovery? Adventure even? Seriously, are the lives and hearts of an entire planet being put within the line of fire for a mere psychopaths, futurists, wet dream? Compare the ambitions of Musk and futurism to the pragmatic needs of society and the environment on Earth. Not only does this sound grandiose, it sounds a little nutty and straight out of the mouth of some mad scientists we grew up watching in movies and reading in comic books. 
Yeah, search for other planets to inhabit and destroy after we have destroyed the one we are already on. Now that's sustainability. God has provided everything we need on Earth. Could this imply a type of schism between the worldview of futurists like Musk and the true living God? Could this be uncovering the true motives of the alleged human progressive evolutionary movement? Motives that possibly do not have the best interests of humanity or the planet Earth in mind? Indeed. Moreover, these points suggest that possibly Musk and the futurists do not aim to improve Earth and humanity, but replace them. Think about it. Mass digital control grids that manage your entire being, that you are connected to biologically, and have no control over regarding final decision making. No longer can you rely on your own thoughts, choices, or even abilities. All of this is given to the smart technology that will handle all of that for you. And still, many ignorant and conditioned citizens will find this arrangement attractive. But what about those of us that like things simple and prefer to keep things closer to the ground and enjoy our privacy and sovereignty? Well, first let's look at what these technologies really are for. Sustainability has nothing to do with fixing Earth, especially if Musk aims to permanently transfer humans to other planets. Earth is simply a dumpster for futurist projects. Moreover, their version of sustainability is a ruse to establish Agenda 2030. Things like uh, social justice, environmental conservation, war on poverty, all of these movements have been Fabianist pocket methods of the elite systematically constructing the global state. The internet is key to the world web global market apparatus that ties everything together. It brought us social media like Facebook, which built the digital global community, memetic social engineering by use of meme culture, and a massive data mining library, and soon by way of 5G speed and blockchain technology, of course. The human genome research has all to do with eugenic transhumanism and the alchemic altering, augmenting, or perfecting of humanity. As if God made a mistake somewhere, or possibly a statement is being made that these futurist reanimators are working to achieve godhood and be as the gods. The creation becoming the creator but most importantly, we see the entire system working under the brain power of AI. Artificial intelligence is the final frontier to bring forth a global dominating force. A type of God computer, all-knowing, unlimited intelligence and omniscient, operating everywhere or omnipresent, creating, controlling, and monitoring, managing everything or omnipotent fully connected to all facets of reality. A true society simulator system that will place technology as the absolute authority over humanity on planet Earth. The future of Source, a hive mind digital model of the collective conscience. A Gnostic heaven on Earth. Well, if it is all for us and our planet, do we have a say in any of this? Do they not call this a democracy? Hmm. So very few affecting so many billions. When do those billions under the knife get a chance to have a choice in the course of incision? Are we beginning to see through their rhetoric now? Is the wool slowly falling from over your eyes? Don't we play a huge role in this? Should we not have a say? Simply put, no. Of course not. This brings us to the worldview that we discussed earlier. Musk and futurists as a whole do not only run the technological future of humanity, but they do not perceive an intrinsic value for humanity either. Atheistic and materialistic, shoot now and ask questions later thought processes only see the end goal. Human life is an obstacle and a burden. Humans are not images of the creator God, but fruitless bags of cells that are mere reactions of random chaos. Therefore, have no true meaning, purpose, or value 
to protect. This is the worldview of those behind this alleged human progressive movement. We are just useless eaters. We can hardly fend for ourselves. We, we can't get along. We are shooting and bombing each other everywhere, destroying the environment. Humans are violent, destructive, mentally ill, inconsistent, and undergoing constant states of crisis and social conflict. It's all over the news. How can you miss it? <laughs> Society can't get along on its own. In fact, it will crumble if technology does not step in to save the day. Self-driving cars for you crazy road ragers running people over. Chip tech for you identity thieves and con artists. And smart tech for all you hopelessly stupid people. Machiavelli, Plato, they all had the same perspectives. The elite's minds have never changed. And neither has their hearts. But not only do we useless eaters not have a say in any of this, this high-level technology is not truly for us common folk. It is to be used to manage us. We could also ask, who made Elon Musk the unquestioned authority of the future of human technology? Who has given these people the keys to our fate? Are we to just be obedient and conform? Trust you, fallen man? When does the Most High God and my responsibility of obedience to Him and only Him through Christ come into the discussion? Is there a discussion at all? But before we can start actually asking questions and using our brains and figuring out the sinister nature of this movement, they must convince us we are involved and a positive part of the evolutionary process. They sprinkle us with the culture of convenience to get us to buy in, or physically plug in, log on, sign up, etc. Next, they roll out their fear-based marketing strategy. This is the old join or die, either or fallacy, where they say, hey, if you don't make this technology, it will make itself. If we do not merge with this technology, it will surpass us and wipe us out completely. Therefore, our only option is to merge with technology through biotranshumanism. Singularity is a future period which technological change will be so rapid and its impact so profound that every aspect of human life will be irreversibly transformed. There won't be a clear distinction between humans and machines. Our computers are not going to be these rectangular devices we put in our pocket. They're going to be inside our bodies and brains, and we're going to be a hybrid of biological and non-biological intelligence. If you go back 500 years, not much happened in a century. Now a lot happens in six months. Technology feeds on itself and it gets faster and faster. In about 40 years, the pace of change is going to be so astonishingly quick that you won't be able to follow it unless you enhance your own intelligence by merging with the intelligent technology you could create. Today, our computers, phones, applications give us superhuman capability. So, as the old maxim says, if you can't beat them, join them. It's about a human-machine partnership. I mean, we already see how, you know, our phones, for example, it's act as memory prosthesis, right? I don't have to remember your phone number anymore because it's on my phone. It's about machines augmenting our human abilities as opposed to, like, completely displacing them. If you look at all the objects that have made the leap from analog to digital over the last 20 years, it's a lot. We're the last analog object in the digital universe. And the problem with that, of course, is that the data input-output is very limited. It's this, it's these. Our eyes are pretty good. We're able to take in a lot of visual information. But our information output is very, very, very low. The reason this is important if we envision a scenario where AI is playing a more prominent role in society is we want good ways to interact with this technology so that it ends up augmenting us. I think it's incredibly important that AI not be other. It must be us. And I could be wrong about what I'm saying. I'm suddenly open to ideas if anybody can suggest a, a path that's better. But I think we're really going to have to either merge with AI or be left behind. I think that in three to five years, 
you will see a computer system that will be able to autonomously learn how to understand, how to build understanding. Not unlike the way the human mind works. It all seems kind of harmless and benign, but we're making cognitive architectures that will fly farther and faster than us and carry a bigger payload, and they won't be warm and fuzzy. I think that in three to five years, you will see a computer system that will be able to autonomously learn how to understand, how to build understanding. It seems they tend to as well exaggerate the potential of this said technology. Like robots being able to self-learn, reason like humans, even feel emotion and experience consciousness. Just as they lie to us about the abilities and achievements of space technology, they also lie to us about the abilities and achievements of AI technology. Humans may become more machine-like, but machines will never gain the essence of God-created life. Though these are gifts God has bestowed upon humans, and humans only, they aim to manipulate our understanding of this and pose that the machine will in fact become its own God and surpass the lowly human race, which speaks to their persuasive message of merging with machine. This way you will be enhanced and safe from the competition of machines because you now have all the advantages that the machine has. Sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? Nice and straightforward. No big deal. You guys make the technology, we let you alter our bodies and minds, and yeah, problem solved. Super future is here. We are now all gods. Let's celebrate. Not quite. This high-level tech will not be universal. Stratified caste societies will ensue due to hierarchical distribution. Citizens will not fully understand how the technology works either. We will be forced to operate on blind faith. We will not be controlling the function of that technology lodged in our bodies either. Leaving users vulnerable to random or contrived malfunction, glitches, hacking, and the dreaded AI terrorist 2.0 rogue computer. The pattern here is that AI might take a little while to wrap its tentacles around a new skill, but when it does, when it gets it, it is unstoppable. DeepMind's AI has administrator level access to Google's servers to optimize energy usage at the data centers. However, this could be an unintentional Trojan horse. You might have to have complete control of the data centers, so with a little software update, that AI could take complete control of the whole Google system, which means they can do anything. They can look at all your data and do anything. Freedom will become a completely new term, very easily. Through simple chips or other advanced forms of technology, citizens can become remote-controlled humanoids, no longer a sovereign biological creation of God but a controlled and monitored object within a massive database. Yes, they go over the moral issues and possibilities of the big bad rogue computer and the robot apocalypse, but with little purpose, more lip service than anything, because they harp on the idea that this movement of technology is inevitable, it's unstoppable, and there's nothing we can do about it. So, join or die. to invest in this because this is today and this is tomorrow. This is what the world is going to be based on, technology. Ignoring that is just delaying the inevitable. One of the fascinating aspects about AI in general is that no one really understands how it works. No one really understands how it works. Even the people who create AI don't really fully understand. No, actually it's not unstoppable. These futurists simply won't stop. Even if we as the people demanded it, they are just psychopaths and they need to convince us of their twisted plans. Because our opinions and needs 
are not a real consideration. We, in a sense, have been backed into a corner, and they are now just literally shoving their ideas and programs down our throats with shiny spoons while whispering sweet nothings in our ears. So let's explain this either-or issue that is being used. Basically, there is the omission of options to this technology. One main option being, we as humans do not need to build this level of technology at all. One could say, anything beyond pragmatic conservationism, culture and trade reform, and practical communication technology is far more than what humanity actually needs. When we begin to dabble in what individuals or certain groups want, or can imagine and fantasize, that's when we begin to delve into deep waters, where we put our best interests in the hands of God-hating maniac geniuses. Hence our technological state today. Who says we have to make this level of technology? Well, one big problem occurs here. It's too late. This technology has been in its production for hundreds of years. It has always been a key part of the magnum opus. There is truly no turning back now. Too much time, money, and concentrated, hell-bent efforts have gone into it. For decades, this level of technology has been the backbone of research and development within the hard and soft sciences. From Stanford Research Institute, who brought us the internet, and later social media and psychometrics data mining to Rand Corporation, who single-handedly industrialized game theory, IBM's Watson, the future tech of DARPA, just to name a few. Even the partnership of Chinese and Japanese power tech development. There's Russia, Scandinavia. The world state is well on its way, and this totalitarian level technology is the beating heart. Overall, whether it's the promotion of transgenderism, transhumanism, or hyper-conservationist nature worship, this biotech and psychometric movement of Musk, his elite handlers, and his proselytes, is based in New World's state human psychological and biological modification. They have succeeded in convincing us that something very unnatural and even detrimental to humanity is of a progressive and natural evolution when in fact, biotech and its agents is an isolated fringe science movement comprised of materialist psychopaths and closet Gnostics whom are funded by the Malthusian power elite of the oligarchies for the final stages of Agenda 2030 and the fruition of the new Babel cyberstate. So it said that by the year 2030, there will be computers that can carry out the same number of functions as an actual human brain. So theoretically, you could download your thoughts and your memories into this computer and, and live forever as a machine. <laughs> Here's one of the latest inventions to combine the wireless concept and miniaturization. It's what's called a wearable computer. A small computer similar to a PDA provides internet access and other applications. Those fashionable glasses contain a display screen. And the small device she's holding is a one-handed keyboard. But future digital devices won't necessarily be ones you wear. They may well be part of you, literally. Before long, you might be able to buy an ocular implant to improve your vision. How about a molar phone implant? Students at the Royal College of Art in London are working on it. So maybe digital boys' toys help define who you are. But in the future, they just might be who you are.